By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an old school magic match between me and Ricardo. Ricardo is a brand new patron from Hamburg, Germany. Welcome to the channel. And he is bringing a deck to the table that I've called Millstone Standstill or Mill Standstill. It's blue, it's white, it's super control-ish. And I've got a lovely deck picture of the deck. And I'm battling his deck with my poison deck, Backwater Poison, black and green. I'm going for the 10 poison counters. Now, before I start with the deck deck, I would just like to point out that as always, you can choose to skip this section. I know some people enjoy going straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on MTG Games and you go straight to the games. And in that description below, you will also find more information about the rule set that we're playing with today. So today we're playing Swedish rules with an open reprint policy. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So if you want to know more about all of that, please check out the description below. And now we're going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Ricardo Mill Standstill. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Ricardo Mill Standstill. So I've called it Standstill, of course, for a reason. This is like an uber control deck, right? We see white and blue together, which is a great control combination. And he really wants to win by decking me, right? There are no creatures in, in this deck, not even Mishra's Factories. He just wants to kill me with the Millstones and the Howling Mines, right? Howling Mines are going to force me to draw tons of cards. And the Millstone, an artifact from Antiquities originally, two to cast, two and tap. Target player puts the top two cards in his or her graveyard. So, I mean, those two work together really well to make me kind of empty my library and deck me. Um, now, interestingly here is that he's also playing with um, land tax. So, land tax is kind of in that way counterproductive that he's also taking out cards from his own library. But, of course, land tax is super good. It's going to help him to take out the basic lands from his deck, meaning he has a bigger chance to draw into that millstone or draw into that ivory tower that maybe he needs or counterspell or swords. Right, so you're going to draw more useful cards instead of just land cards. Um, and of course, when you fill your hand, it means you're going to activate your ivory towers. There are four ivory towers in this deck. So what I see here, for example, is that Ricardo hasn't chosen to play with Wrath of God or um, an Evanerals Disc. He's really thinking, I'm going to gain so much life from my ivory towers, I can take the damage from combat. I don't mind. I'm just going to take get so much life of Library of Lang, Land Tax, Ivory Tower combination, I'll be fine. And of course, when something happens, he still has mana drain, four counter spells, four swords to plowshares. He's got a recall to get swords to plowshares back. So there's just a lot of control in this deck. Now, I do think that before sideboarding, I have a bit of a chance. The reason that I say that is because I'm playing with a poison deck today. We're going to look at my deck later. But of course, poison doesn't care about the life total of my opponent. So Ricardo can be on 105. I don't care. I just want to give him 10 poison counters and win the game. And I think that's going to be a big advantage for me, especially uh, in the first game, because then he doesn't know my strategy yet. And maybe he's going to use his counter spells and swords for other spells. And I can kind of sneak through some of my poison creatures. That's what I'm hoping for. I think after the first game, he can board in his moat, which is super good against me. He can board in his mace of if. And of course, he knows my battle plan. So then I would say he is a slight favorite. But before that moment... I mean, I feel like I've got a chance. I've got a chance here. Anyway, uh, this is Ricardo's deck. Now let's take a look at my list. And here we see my poison deck. So I've called it Backwater Poison. And you've seen this on the channel a few times. Every now and then it pops up. I just really love playing with it. And again, just like Millstone is an alternative way to win a game, Poison is also an alternative way to win a game, right? If you can get 10 poison counters on your opponent, you win. Now it's quite hard with old school to do this because you only have two creatures that put poison counters on your opponent. That is uh, Pit Scorpion, which is one black and two from Legends. It's a one one and whenever it deals damage, it also puts a poison counter on the opponent, right? So you've got to hit 10 times with the Scorpion. But then you have Marsh Viper, one green and three from the dark. It's a one two and it also deals one damage, right? One power, but when it deals damage, it also puts two poison counters on your opponent. So with the Marsh Viper, you only have to hit your opponent twice. Now, this is going to be really, really tough because they're small creatures. So I'm also playing for in the late game when I'm probably already lost, but still I'm playing Serpent Generator. I think Serpent Generator is pretty cool. Six mana to cast, right? So it's huge, but it can make 1-1 one, one snake tokens with poison, which is pretty cool. I think maybe a poison deck, a control deck with six of these in it, that's still... 
somewhere kind of part of the plan that I that I have. But that's something for in the future because for now I only have one Serpent Generator. So in this deck what I went for is more the early tempo play. So I'm playing with four Elves of Deep Shadow. So Elves of Deep Shadow is a 1-1. One, one. I can tap for one black mana, right? I do take one damage if I tap her. Um, but what I want to do with that is I want to play an Ice Storm or a sinkhole on turn two. That is really important with this deck. So I'm going to attack the mana base of my opponent. And at the same time, I'm going to ramp up, hopefully with my Elves of Deep Shadow. I also play with Crumbles to kind of target the uh, the Moxon and other, other mana rocks if my opponent is playing with those, right? So I'm going to make sure that my opponent doesn't have a lot of lands at the start of the game. And hopefully I can then quickly play out some poison creatures Get some poison on now because i'm denying mana from my opponent i think that paralyze is going to work really really well paralyze an enchant creature for one black you put it on a creature the creature becomes tapped and doesn't untap anymore the opponent can pay four mana during the upkeep to untap it right four mana that is huge especially when i'm taking care of his lance with my sinkholes and ice storms and of course with his mana rocks with my crumbles right so that is the big plan now, i'm also playing with four hypnotic specters and hypnotic specter in here has kind of a double function it's the lightning rod of my deck you know if i play this people have to remove it so they're going to use their removal their swords their lightning bolts on the hypnotic specter and then not on my poison creatures right that is the big plan okay um, if they don't also find, you know, maybe they don't have the mana for it, then of course I can use my Hypnotic Spectre to force my opponent to discard and lose like hopefully important cards from his or her hand to kind of try to kill my poison creatures. So that's, that is the big plan. Now there are a few neat little tricks in this deck. I'm just going to highlight one. I'm playing with Hell's Caretaker and I think Hell's Caretaker and Serpent Generator, it's kind of a combination, right? Because with Hell's Caretaker during the upkeep, I can tap the Hell's Caretaker, sack a creature that I own to get a creature back from my graveyard. So when I have a Serpent Generator, I can make a 1-1 one -one Serpent and I can sack that Serpent to the Caretaker and get maybe a Marsh Viper back. Now, of course, the problem with every graveyard uh, plan and strategy is the swords to plowshares and unfortunately i'm playing against swords again today swords removes the creature from the game meaning it's exiled meaning i cannot find it in my graveyard so i just personally i wish that swords to plowshares would just put the creature in the graveyard but then again i also kind of like it that it's get exiled because it allows like other strategies and anyway i just think it, it, it would at least make cards like raise dead and hell's caretaker a lot better if Swords would just put the creature in the graveyard and not exile it. But hey, it is what it is. Anyway, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent today, Ricardo. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the poison strategy, right? Black and green. Let's get those 10 poison counters going. And my opponent, Ricardo, is on a millstone plan. And it looks like I'm taking a mulligan here, starting with six cards. And let's see what my opponent can do. I believe he is on the play here. So he wants to, uh, yeah, control the game, blue and white, and he plays with Millstones and Howling Mines. So he wants to deck me. He's also playing with Ivory Towers and Land Tax, which is quite nice. Let's see what he's gonna do here. Looking at his seven. Starting here with a Mox Pearl. Mox Pearl into Lantex will be quite good. He's playing with four Lantexes. There we go. Lantex on the board. This is a great start for Ricardo. He's going to have an active tax probably. I mean, I'm playing with two Moxen as well. Maybe if I can find them, I can decide to go like Mox Emerald, Elves of Deep Shadow. But exactly, that's highly unlikely. Oh, I do have a Mox here. Mox Jet. Um, unfortunately, no land to target here because I am playing with four Sinkholes. So now I'm just going to pass the turn, allowing Ricardo, of course, to use... His Lantex, what a great start for him. This is what he wants to do. Take out those basics. And if he can then also find a library of Lang and an Ivory Tower, that would be ideal for him. There is an island. He's only picking two, it seems, and he's going to shuffle back up. Let me know in the comments below, by the way, because I don't play with Lantex often. Like, when are you going to pick two lands, three lands, or maybe only one land? Of course, it depends how many basics you have, what your overall strategy is. But I guess here, Ricardo doesn't want to discard uh, his basics. So that's why he's only picking two, I guess. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, curious to hear from you how you play with Lantex. 
Ooh, there is a Library of Alexandria. So this is actually already explaining why he's picking two cards instead of three. Although you're going to discard down to hand size, so that doesn't actually matter. Anyway, he's got seven cards. I'm sure he has his reasons passing on. So I've got a sinkhole here. And of course, he can still use his library in response of the sinkhole. I think we actually discussed this. Let's take a look. So he's just drawing a card for turn. So I he guess he's going to let it go. He could have activated the library in response to the single because he had seven in hand, so he could have gone up to eight. And now he's going to activate the tax. And of course, he should have done that before the draw step. Perhaps he did. I believe, I believe what we discussed, I said, you know, you could still draw a card and... He said, is that okay with you? And he took a card. So now he's going to go and draw stuff. Exactly. So the card you, you saw him earlier draw was the card from the Library of Alexandria still, just to keep it clear. Now we are playing very relaxed casual here. So we're kind of helping each other out. This is something you see more often in, uh, in old school. And I mean, helping out is a big, a big thing. But if an opponent says, oh yeah, I could have tapped the, the library. Is that okay with you? You just say, yeah, sure. Go for it. Anyway, he's playing the Sapphire here and the Island. Gonna tap a white. And there's the Ivory Tower. So I remember when he did this, I was expecting a Savannah Alliance. And I'm like, okay, he's playing a tower. I don't see any creatures. Now he's copying the tower. Now, of course, Ricardo doesn't know that I'm playing with poison. So he's thinking, I'm just gonna gain tons of life. And I'm set, you know, then I can work on my other plan, which is milling my opponent. So his deck is really doing what it wants to do here. But of course, now he stepped out, so he cannot counter. So I kind of have an opening. So hopefully I can cast a March Viper here. Tapping four. There we see the March Viper. And this is the surprise element that I talked about in the deck deck and why I think I am... Maybe favorite is a big word, but I have a good chance in game one because Ricardo doesn't know what he knows now. But before I cast a Marsh Viper, he didn't know that this was my plan. So now it's kind of like, oh, what does that do? Oh yeah, that's poison counters. My whole life gain strategy is not going to work against poison because he is going to gain six life here. We don't see his life total, by the way, on the, on the board, but I believe he's going to bring some dice in. Because he's going to gain 6, so he's going to go up to 26, but it doesn't really matter, you know, because all I want to do is just give him 10 poison counters. I mean, the card Ricardo really needs here, well, I mean, he can take 2 damage, he's got 0 poison counters, but the card he needs here is really a Swords. Just Swords, Swords the Viper, keep counter magic up for other poison creatures, and you're actually kind of fine. You're going to probably draw into a recall, then you can get all those uh, Swords back from your... Uh, from your graveyard and you can cast them again. You know, I only have, of course, eight poison creatures and the serpent generator. But I mean, if you can kind of get it all contained, he, he's fine. Anyway, shuffling up again, I believe picking two basics instead of three. And then he's going to draw for the turn. Look at his grip of cards. So I guess he's first going to He's going to make sure that the tax is going to go off before the ivory tower goes off. Exactly. That's what he's doing now. So he gains even more life than the six that I talked about. I mean, I'm not even going to count because it's not going to be that relevant, but we're going to see some dice appearing right now. So he's going to stack the triggers in a way that the Lantex trigger goes off first, meaning it enters the stack last, if you can still follow. And then you've got the double ivory tower. So that means he's going to go up to 30 here, which is kind of insane. What he needs here actually is just a, it's just a land tax. We do see a strip mine. Is he going to strip my forest? Yeah, of course, because that means I cannot cast any more Marsh Vipers. And he's going to keep probably counter magic up. Does he have a Swords as well? Ooh, he's going to do something else. Tapping to a Howling Mine. Didn't play out a land for turn, I believe, but maybe he wants to... Well, he did actually was the strip mine. He did, okay. Because the nice thing here for Ricardo is that he has an active tax next turn, even if I don't play out a land. So I'm going to attack here with the Marsh Viper. And he's going to take the damage. And he's going to get two poison counters. You can see the two skulls there at the top. 
they are keeping track of the poison counters. So he's got two poison counters. When he has 10 poison counters, it's the end of the road here for Dicardo. But we're not there yet. Only the first hit with the Viper. I'm going to tap three. Are we going to see a pit? There's a pit scorpion. I was hoping for this. A 1-1 one, one from Legends. When it deals damage, Ricardo gets one poison counter. So Marsh Viper is a lot better because it gives double poison. But I mean, Pit gives one. So if I attack with both, I'm, I can put him on five poison counters next turn. So I'm going to hope that Ricardo cannot find any uh, swords to plowshares. I mean, he is playing with a full playset, so probably is going to find one. But I'm just keeping my fingers crossed here. And he can activate the tax again. But I guess he's not using the text at the moment, just gaining the life and then going to draw two from the Howling Mine. I mean, the life gain strategy is going great. If he would have played against any other deck, I mean, this would be perfect for him. The problem here for Ricardo is that he is phasing Poison here and Poison really doesn't care about the life total. He's probably thinking about this now. What can I do? This is annoying. There's an island hitting the board. He just needs a Swords. If he can Swords the Viper, I mean, he's got so many turns to try to find an answer for the, for the Pit Scorpion. He's going to tap two, though. Another copy, perhaps. No, another Howling Mine. So Howling Mine here on the other top of the other Howling Mine. That means I'm going to draw three. Which is quite nice because it means I've got a bigger chance of finding a Forest than another Marsh Viper. i got to untap my Viper still, by the way. Yeah, finally untapping it. Not really doing things in order here, but okay. I'm going to attack. Going to put him on five poison counters if he doesn't have an answer. Wow. Look at me go. Five poison counters. That is nice. There's a green. And do I have another viper? I'm tapping three though, so not a viper. An ice storm instead. Putting an ice storm on one of the islands while well, trying to. There's a counter spell countering away the ice storm. And now Ricardo is going to untap again. So he's going to draw three. And I'm actually fine with him using the counter spell on the ice storm. Because that means he doesn't have a counter spell later in the game when I'm going to play out another poison creature. Or maybe my serpent generator. So he's going to draw three cards here. And I think the reason that Ricardo is not activating the tax anymore is because he ran out of basics. I think that's, that's the reason that I can think of of why he's not using the tax at the moment. So the tax did his job. And again, you know, his deck is actually working quite well. The problem for him are the poison creatures. Because look at his life total, look at his hand size, also got an active text that apparently already took out all the basics, which is what you want the text to do. So the deck's working. We just need a millstone, I guess. A library of Lang would be nice for Ricardo. There's another Howling Mine. Oh my goodness. Passing to turn here. That means I'm going to draw four cards. But yeah, I mean, again, I can hit him here for, for three poison counters. He's going to go up to eight poison. I mean, this is, this is a big problem for Ricardo here. I mean, he's got one last turn. I mean, if he finds a Swords, deals with the Viper, and I don't play out another poison creature. Or do I have another one here? Another Pit Scorpion. Would be, yeah, this is really good for me, because that means that even if he finds a Swords, he can only kill one of my creatures. Okay, but we are going to see a counter spell here on the Pit Scorpion. That is a very important move by Ricardo because now if he can find a source, he can Swords the Viper. The next turn I can put him on nine, so he's kind of bought himself an extra turn. There's a Crumble, probably on one of the Howling Mines, exactly. He's just going to draw one card less, meaning one chance less of finding that answer that he's looking for. Like a Balance, for example, would be really good here for Ricardo. Also playing out on Elves of Deep Shadow. Like a balance would be so good. Because again, again, the balance doesn't count the enchantments or artifacts. Oh, an ancestral recall. Oh, if he finds a balance, he can stabilize. Oh, this is tense. This is tense. 
He's on eight poison. Of course, he played the Ancestral on my end step, so he's going to take his turn now. Again, he's going to take get tons of life, but who cares? I wonder if he's going to board out the Ivory Towers after game one. I mean, they're not really useful anyway against, against my poison strategy. Anyway, he's going to gain some more life here. He's still going to draw three cards. I mean, he is playing with a full playset of swords. We've seen zero swords to plowshares here. So I'm really expecting at least one swords. A balance would be even worse. I'm just hoping it's just going to be a, a swords and I can still attack with the pit scorpion. I mean... Just going to have to wait and see. Of course, Swords is an instant, so he could also just choose to pass the turn and play it during combat before damage is dealt. There are so many options for him here. I mean, his hand is full. It's chock full. What does he want to do? He is looking at that planes. Okay, adding another planes. What is his plan? I mean, this could also be a good sign. The reason that he's taking this long, well, not that it's that long, but the reason that he's taking his time is because he doesn't have the swords. A Chaos Orb. Okay, this can do the trick. And if I would activate Chaos Orb now because I wouldn't wait for me using the Crumble. I'm pointing at the Crumble because, of course, I crumbled the Howling Mine and I'm regretting that now. So, you know, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I should have kept the Crumble because then, of course, I can... In response to the activation, I can crumble. But hey, that's water under the bridge. And of course, he's going to flip here on my Marsh Viper. There's nothing I can do. I just got to pray for a miss. And it's a hit. Oh, man. It's a good hit. It's a good flip, Ricardo. It's a good flip. I was hoping maybe you would miss. It is what it is. And I have to admit something here that, that with these Patreon games, um, I sometimes play against players that are quite new to old school. I think, Ricardo, you're not super new to old school, but you are kind of new to old school. I believe you've been playing it for two years. And then I always feel there's quite an advantage for me with, with flipping, although I still miss orb flips, but I simply have more experience. Um, but hey, that's part of the charm of the orb, of course. And yeah, some people, even after like practicing a few times, they never ever miss. And some people... Maybe like me, they still miss even though they flipped so often. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at what I can do. So I've, I've lost my Marsh Viper. First going to attack him for, for one here. Going to put him on nine, I guess. Or not. Look at this. I'm first going to do a sinkhole in the first main. So he's going to float a blue. Then we're going to go in combat. So the blue is going to go out of his mana pool. Then I'm going to attack him. Going to put him on nine poison. And now I guess I want to play something in my second main that he cannot counter. So this was a little trick of mine to play the single first main. If he counters it, fine. But then his blue is tapped. That means second main I can play it. If he floats it like he did, also fine. Because look at this. Now I can play the Marsh Viper without having to worry about counter magic. That's of course very important for me. He's on nine poison counters. So this is a big problem for Ricardo. I mean, he needs... Again, he needs more than just one answer. He needs two answers because he's on nine poison counters. He can draw, of course, three cards. Again, he hasn't played a single sorts. And at this point in the match, I was thinking, does he actually play with sorts? You know, because remember, when we play this, we don't see each other's deck lists or photos beforehand, of course. And after uh, we had this match and I saw his list, I was like, wow, he's playing with four swords. That surprised me because I didn't see any. Maybe we're going to see one now. I mean, his life total is huge. There's just a five. You're probably standing for 50 or something. I don't know. Maybe more. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, he's going to go up to his main phase here. Well, first draw, of course. He's going to draw three cards. Okay, what's going to happen? Can he find a balance or a double sorts? If he cannot, I have this game one. There's an island. There's a sorts, perhaps. Yeah, one sorts on the Marsh Viper. 
One sword I can take. I'm counting on my pit scorpion. No, 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 no. Don't do anything with the pit scorpion. Please. Don't do it. Three mana. Oh, there's a recoil. He's going to get back the swords. No, no, oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe I would have recalled him for two, by the way. Uh, oh, then again, then you don't have enough mana. Anyway. Oh, man. Oh, man. Killing both of my creatures here because of the recall, the swords, and then the recall on the swords. Well done, Ricardo. Stabilizing with nine poison counters. Oh, man. Are, are we in this now for a very long game one? Because it's going to take long for him to win with his decking strategy. Hopefully, I can find some more. I mean, I've lost three Marsh Vipers now. Is that correct? And two or one Pit Scorpion? Finding an Ice Storm here, taking care of probably his untapped island. Or am I going to go for the play? Yeah, probably islands, right? I mean, it's that's not really a good decision to make. Maybe I should have kept the Ice Storm for a maze later in the game. There's a Strip Mine. I mean, do I want to strip? I could have gone for planes, strip the other planes. Then, of course, he still has the Mox Pearl. I don't know. Another Elves of Deep Shadow attacking him. No, using it for mana. Am I going to cast another Pit Scorpion? I thought for a moment maybe in Hypnotic Spectre, but this is another Pit Scorpion. This is really good. Again, a problem for Ricardo here. So putting the pressure on Ricardo constantly. I mean, he just managed to kill two of my poison creatures. Which was great. It's going to go up to 54. Going to draw three cards, of course. But now, I mean, he's used his recall. He's used the swords. So, you know, still there are three swords in the deck, of course. But again, keeping my fingers crossed, all I need is one hit from a poison creature to get the win. He's already used his orb. It's on the board, cannot counter. There's a Tundra, tapping two whites, another Howling Mine. This is all fine, I don't care, it's fine. Passing the turn, it seems. So I'm hoping now that he's not keeping his swords for combat. Because that's of course still an option, swords is an instant. There we go with the one pit scorpion. Is this going to be enough? And it is 10 points. Poison wins here in game one. Oh, this feels good. I have to say, Ricardo, that, that moment when you did a recall on the swords, I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you actually going to stabilize and win the game here? But, oh man, I feel very happy winning this. It doesn't happen a lot you win with poison. But of course, this was just game one. Now Ricardo knows the plan. We're going to go into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm up one. And look at that. Ricardo taking a mulligan. So starting with six, just like I did in game one, by the way. I also took a mulligan. Let's see what he can do. There's a library. Ooh, that's kind of unfortunate with that mulligan for him. Now he's got five in hand, so he's got to wait an extra turn before he can activate the library. But still, it's a really good opener, of course. Remember, though, I am playing with four sinkholes and four ice storms. And of course, after game one, I know, know that he's playing creatureless. So I've boarded out my paralyzes and I've boarded in glooms. So I think Gloom is going to be really good. If it can have Land Denial in combination with Gloom, it's going to be really tough for him to play out his swords and his disenchants. So I'm kind of hoping for that. And here, of course, we see Ricardo just passing a turn after drawing up to six. I'm playing a Mox Jet here. Can I find another land? Maybe play a Pit Scorpion or, of course, some land removal on that library. Okay, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Didn't see a Hippie at all in game number one. So here's the Hypnotic Spectre. And that can also be quite annoying for Ricardo. So he's going to draw up to card number seven. He can now use his, lo his Loa to go up to eight cards. But of course, I've got that hippie to balance it out. So he's probably hoping to find a planes and a swords. Eight cards in hand. There is a planes. Does he have a swords to plowshares to take care of the hypnotic specter? Showing it here that it's a Portuguese planes because Ricardo is from Portugal, but living in Germany, Hamburg. 
And it's really cool to see that the old school scene in Germany is, um, is really getting bigger and bigger. There are more and more communities. It's really cool. Anyway, there's the swords on the Hypnotic Spectre. And this is what Ricardo wants, right? Six in the hand. Next turn, he can go up to seven, draw a card. So what I need here is land removal. I need to take care of that Library of Alexandria. At least put some pressure on the board, maybe in the form of um, a poison creature. But land removal would be even better. Okay, there's an Ice Storm. Yeah. And I mean, that makes sense. If you look at my deck list, four Ice Storms, four Sinkholes. Perhaps I also board it in Tsunamis here. I've got two Tsunamis in the sideboard. Actually, when you look at my sideboard, it's quite good against Ricardo's deck. Because I've got Tsunami and I've got Glooms. And those cards are, are really difficult for Ricardo to deal with. Once they resolve, of course, because he's got counter magic <laughs> and disenchants. So anyway, but they're, they're good against Ricardo's deck. You know what I mean? Anyway, Ricardo playing another planes, passing the turn, not finding any blue here, it seems. And I think it's time for me to deploy some poison creatures. Four cards in hand there. The red dice is showing the amounts of cards that I have in hand. There's a gloom. So from the sideboard, and this is really tough here, right, for Ricardo. So Gloom means all his white spells cost three extra and his Circle of Protection activations are also costing three extra. In that way, Gloom is kind of unique because it targets like one specific group of cards, right? The Circle of Protection so specifically. I kind of like that. I'm sure during the design process, they were like, yeah, but these Circle of, of Protections, maybe they're too strong. And I remember playing as a little Timmy we actually had a rule where uh, in our local game store where we said no direct damage to the face, right? But also you couldn't play with Circle of Protections. We thought they were just lame. You know, why hide behind the circle? Uh, it's funny. Funny how things have changed. Anyway, um, there's a pass by Ricardo. Am I going to play out my first poison creature? There is a Marsh Viper. Now, Ricardo doesn't have double blue yet. So this is the ideal moment for me to play it out. And also, he doesn't have enough mana at the moment to play a Swords. Remember, a Swords is now four mana to cast. And he's, of course, already used the Swords. So now he's got enough mana. So if he wants to, and if he has it, of course, he could cast a Swords now for four. There we see a sword. So this, this game, he is finding a Swords to Plowshares. What we saw in... In game uh, one, it took him quite long, and now he's already found two. So the good news for me, at least, is that he's already used up two of his swords to plowshares. But I'm sure he boarded in the moat and the ma and the, the mazes of if from the side. Tapping two black here. Are we going to see a demonic tutor? I wonder what I'm going to tutor up. There are some interesting options. I could go for serpent generator because I've got so much mana. That would be kind of nice. Another option could be a Sylvan, just to get some more card selection because I've got enough life. And I know that, of course, Ricardo is playing a mill plan, so he's not planning to, like, deal any damage, actually, to me. So that makes a Sylvan slightly better. But I think a Serpent Generator would be kind of cool. It's very tempting. Of course, I cannot play it out yet. Then I would have to wait a turn. So three cards in hand at the moment. Going to tap four. What else am I going to do? There's a Hell's Caretaker. Yeah, and this is what I talked about in the deck deck. That's so unfortunate with Swords to Plowshares. Of course, removes the creatures from the game. They're exiled, meaning I cannot use the Hell's Caretaker to get back my Marsh Viper. I think that's what I'm pointing out here as well. So Hell's Caretaker, a card from Legends, one black and three. During my upkeep, I can tap it. Sack a creature that I own. It could be the Hell's Caretaker itself as well, by the way. And then I can uh, get back uh, a creature from my graveyard, put it directly into play. So Hell's Caretaker is kind of nice in a reanimator strategy. The problem, of course, with the Caretaker is that it's costing four, which is pretty steep, and you can only use it during your upkeep. Anyway, passing the turn here to Ricardo, so he's going to untap with his four. Drawing a card for turn. Hasn't found a single mine yet. No land text yet. It's a completely different game than uh, what we saw in game one. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, ideally, he would want to play another blue land. So he's got counter magic up. Of course, I'm not hoping for that scenario. Okay, he's tapping all four. That's kind of nice. There's a Lantex. Again, Lantex costing four because of the gloom. 
I mean, the Gloom is great, especially when you play against an opponent that also wants to keep counter magic mana up. It's almost impossible with the Gloom on, on the table. Tapping the Jets. Okay, there's a Soul Ring. Tapping six. Is this going to be the Serpent Generator? Are we going to see the Serpent Generator? Yes, it's the Serpent Generator. I was hoping that I looked that one up. I kind of half remembered, but I wasn't sure. So Serpent Generator hitting the board. It's an artifact from Legends. I can pay four and tap it, and I can make a 1-1 one, one snake token. And that snake token has poison. So I can get the poison train started. I can also attack here, by the way, with my health caretaker. Put Ricardo on 19. That's exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, pointing out the combination health caretaker serpent generator. I believe I talked about that in the deck tech as well. But it's not going to be relevant now because there are no Marsh Vipers in the graveyard. They're all exiled. Passing the turn here back to Ricardo. Let's see what he can do. Five cards in hand. And of course he can trigger the tax. Yeah, I've got five mana. Did I play out a land last turn? If I did, that was a bit of a mistake because now I'm activating his tax. And that tax is very helpful actually against Gloom. But it is what it is. Even if I wouldn't have played it out, he could have, of course, chosen to maybe use his strip on one of his own lands to activate the tax. Anyway, it is what it is. Tax is activated. So Ricardo got three basics and, of course, a card for turn. So four cards. Lantex is so good. I think Lantex is just so good. Playing out an island here, five lands. So he can now also disenchant. So he could play a disenchant on the Gloom. I mean, if he wants to, and even if, if he has a disenchant, he's probably going to wait until my end step to do so. I think if you're Ricardo, you probably want to just um, have a Howling Mind, for example. Going to tap three here. What are we going to see for three? A Jalem Tome. Interesting. I haven't seen the Tome yet. Interesting to see the Jalem Tome. I believe he plays with one then in the deck. Maybe coming from the side? Yeah, I believe it was in the sideboard. He had a Jalem Tome and a Jam Day Tome in the side. Seven in hand. And it looks like he's going to pass the turn. I'm, I'm thinking about doing something on end step. Guess I'm not doing it though. Drawing a card for turn. Tapping a green. I was expecting a crumble here. Instead, it's an Elves of the Deep Shadow. Attacking him for one again. Tapping a Bayou. Okay, there's the crumble. So playing a crumble on the Tome. In response, he's going to use the Tome. So no counterspell by Ricardo. But I mean, he gets an activation out of it. I'm using a crumble on it, which is not too bad for Ricardo. Going to gain some life, which could be relevant in this game. I mean, who knows? Anyway, he's going to go back up to well, he's going to go back up to twenty one. So crumble gives life equal to the artifact's casting cost to the uh, to the controller of that artifact. So Jalen Tome being three to cast, meaning he gets three life. And I'm going to pass the turn here, keeping mana open to use the serpent generator on end step. So Serpent Generator is, I believe, 4 to activate. So maybe on end step of Ricardo, I can activate it, make a snake. And now we can see that Gloom is not going to be very effective anymore because Ricardo is playing more and more lands. So as we get later and later into the game, Gloom's power is weakening. There is a Plains. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still annoying, the Gloom. So hopefully, you know, for Ricardo, it's going to be worthwhile to put a disenchant on the Gloom. But I think at this stage, you probably disenchant the, um, the Serpent Generator before the Gloom. And here we see an Ivory Tower. And then on end step, look at me go. I'm going to make a snake. There we go. 
and the tokens are, are were sent to me by the Venetian Lions. Thank you very much, guys, for these beautiful, beautiful tokens. I still use them. And it looks like I'm gonna attack with all three. So dealing three points of damage and putting a poison counter on my opponent. So we're back on track. One poison counter, only nine left to go. And there is an Hypnotic Spectre. Counterspell though on the Hypnotic Spectre. So this is cool because now the Hippie is in the graveyard. So one of the options for me during my next upkeep is to sack one of my creatures to get that Hypnotic Spectre back. That will be really sweet. Anyway, first it's Ricardo's turn, of course. Let's see what he's going to do. So I'm actually feeling pretty good. I, I also have mana open to make another snake with Serpent Generator. I'm just hoping that Ricardo cannot find a Disenchant. It looks like he is thinking about doing something here. Gaining some life from the Ivory Tower. So he's going to go back up to 19. Going to draw for turn. So he's got six in hand. He is in the tank. What can he do? Don't disenchant my generator. Don't do it. Don't do it, Ricardo. Even if you disenchant it, though, I can still use it at least once in response, which is something I have two serpents, which is not too shabby. But obviously, I'm hoping for him not to do it. I mean, it's obvious that he's got some options because he's really in the tank here, trying to figure out what to do. I mean, he only has one poison counter. He's got some life gain going. Okay, playing out an island here, so five in hand then. Looks like he's going to play something else. Hoping for a Howling Mine? No, it looks like it's a Disenchant, though. There's a Disenchant. So what is he going to target? I guess in response, you're using my Serpent Generator. Of course, he's going to use the Generator. He's going to target that. That makes perfect sense. Ah, that's too bad. That's too bad. Yeah, I mean, the Gloom is good. But as I said, later in the game, it gets... It loses its power a little bit because your opponent is going to get more lands, of course. And then what I needed here really is to, to keep using my, my land removal. Anyway, look at this, though. Hell's Caretaker, second Hells of Deep Shadow to get back my Hypnotic Spectre. Doing this in my upkeep, super happy with this. And it's kind of good, right? Because next turn, then I can start attacking. Look at me go here as well with my snakes. Attacking, dealing two points of damage and putting two poison counters on the Ricardo, so he's gonna go up to three poison counters. You can see the skulls there on my playmat. And passing the turn here to Ricardo. So, I mean, I'm not unhappy with how things are going. Next turn, I can force him to discard as well. And this is really nice. This is a place where I wanna be. Even if Ricardo has a swords in hand, he now has to choose. Am I going to sort the Hypnotic Spectre? Which makes sense. You don't want to lose cards. Or am I going to sort one of the Snake Tokens? Because I also don't want to take any more Poison. And we saw in Game 1 how dangerous Poison is. Oh, Balance! No, 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 no. This is horrible. This is horrible. This Balance is the perfect answer by Ricardo. This is perfection for him. The only good news for me is that he's got to lose some cards and lands, but I mean, this is horrible for me. I'm, I'm losing so much. Hypnotic Spectre, two snakes. And he's losing Swords to Plows here, though, so it's not too bad. I believe he's putting at least one Sword Star in the bin, maybe even two. So that is not too shabby. Then I wonder what card he kept in hand. Perhaps a Counterspell because he's got two blue open. Passing the turn here. Oh, man. But this is really a setback. I 
And this is, of course, what Ricardo wants to do, control the game. There's finally a Howling Mine, the first mine here in game number two, passing the turn to me, so I get to draw two cards. I mean, if I can now just find some poison creatures, that's also going to work, right? Okay, there. first we're going to see a sinkhole. Interesting, on the white. I expect it to go on the blue because then he cannot counter. Choosing a different route, though. Going for the white mana. Playing a pit scorpion. I think perhaps I should have done it on the blue. I guess next turn maybe I want to get rid of this last planes. That could be a strategy, but... I, I first should have checked how many swords he has in his graveyard. Maybe I asked because I believe he's already got three swords to plowshares in the graveyard at least. That means that I shouldn't be that much afraid of his white. Therefore, go for his blue because then I cancel out his double blue counter uh, potential. But okay, decision made to go for the white mana. There is a copy here on the mine. And this is, of course, risky. Like, I understand that it's part of Ricardo's plan to copy the mines and control the game and also gain more life with tower. But against my poison creatures, it's tough, of course, because now I get to draw three cards. If he can find a Marsh Viper... I mean, it looks like I can attack him here, put him on four poison counters. Now, another card that's going to be very painful for me. Okay, there's a strip probably on the last planes. Yeah, once I decide to go that route, I guess I have to commit. A problem for me here is the recall, though. If Ricardo can find a recall, there are so many good cards in his graveyard at the moment. Of course, he needs some more mana, though. But if he can find the right combination... And now he can activate the tax, by the way. Probably could have done that before, but now he's noticing it. And that is something that I, by the way, and Ricardo told me this, he doesn't play with land tax often. And, and I can relate, Ricardo, because I also have a few decks where I use tax in, because it's such a good card, so you probably play it more. Um, but anyway, when I then play with tax, I forget the triggers. Sometimes I even forget to show the basic lands, so... I had an opponent once, I was like, hey man, you got to show the lens. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it was almost like I was trying to cheat, but I wasn't. I just forgot about that part. Um, you know, and that's it when you don't play with these cards often. They're not super complicated. I'm not saying that, but you got to, you know, know when you can use it. And it's kind of got to be in your system. Just like when I play with Timmy, ping you for one at the end step. It's got to be kind of in your system. Anyway, let's take a look at what Ricardo can do. Drawing tons of cards now. Three from the tax, three because of the double Howling Mines. So he's got six new cards in his hand. That's insane. That's almost like a one-sided... Uh, that's, that's like a double Ancestral Recall, actually. Six cards, insane. There's a Maze of If, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a good card. Part of me was hoping that maybe he wouldn't play with Maze because I hadn't seen the Maze until now. And again, he's stabilizing. I mean, he's, he's four poison. I mean, I'm far, far away from a victory here. Is he going to deck me? Right? That's the question. I mean, my library is getting thinner and thinner. I think I'm kind of, when I'm looking at it, estimating them kind of halfway with the library. Tapping four. Are we going to see a, a tsunami? Cool. From the sideboard. Is this going to work? That would be awesome. Oh, counterspell. Tsunami here being so good. I'm going to attack. He's going to use the mace, of course, but I just still want to attack. And he's going to untap with everything that he has. So, I mean, I've played out quite a lot of land removal, and I wonder what I boarded out for the tsunamis. Could have been like I've got two tsunami sideboard. Perhaps I boarded out a sinkhole and ice storm, put two tsunamis in. Of course, I boarded out the four paralyzes, and for that, I boarded in the three glooms at least. Because I only play three gloom sites. I'm now just kind of trying to think what my sideboard plan was. But anyway, let's just focus on, on the rest of the match. Four poison counters for Ricardo. And he's going up in life again, going back up to 19. He's going to draw three cards. Oh, that is so insane. And I guess he's got enough lands choosing not to use the tax. Makes, I guess it makes sense when you're also drawing three cards from the mine. If you also would use the tax, 
without your library of Lang, you would just be forced to discard a lot of basics that maybe later in the game you need. Remember, you are playing against a deck with eight land removal spells, and he's already lost quite a lot of planes. There's a Black Lotus, by the way, on the side of Ricardo, and a planes. What are we going to see? Going through his hand again, going for the motion. He's really in the tank here. And playing out another ivory tower. Yeah, the live, the live game plan is working. That part of the deck is working very, very well, Ricardo. You could consider playing maybe with Island Sanctuary as well. Of course, you've got a moat, but... Also because you don't want to deck yourself, right? So Island Sanctuary in this case. Oh, look at that sinkhole. Is it going to resolve? Let it resolve. No, Counterspell. Yeah. But, I mean, eventually Ricardo's going to run out of counter spells, right? Do we have another land removal spell, though? We have a Desert Twister. Six mana. Shout out to the Desert Twisters in Arizona, by the way. Love you guys. Destroying the maze. Attacking here. Going to put Ricardo on five poison. I'm halfway there. And, um... Yeah, passing the turn. So I was um, taking a bit of a risk here, of course, to do and the sinkhole and the desert twister because, of course, Ricardo still had the lotus. But when you go for it, you go for it. You kind of plan this double spell in your mind where you think, okay, at least if he's got one counter, I can play through his counter magic. And remember, he's playing with four counter spells, one mana drain. I believe he's now already used three counter spells. So that means he only has one drain and counter spell left. Also... His bin is with, there are at least three sorts to plowshares in his graveyard. So I'm feeling pretty good. The only card, and I mentioned this before, that I'm very worried about is Recall. I mean, Recall is just super good in this scenario. Also in combination with the tax, right? He can just find the lance and exchange lance for, you know, useful spells. Attacking him again here. Another poison counter, putting him on six poison counters. And playing an Elves of Deep Shadow. Passing the turn here. Unfortunately, not finding another like Marsh Viper or Pit Scorpion would have been really, really sweet. And he's going to gain some more life, of course. But his main concern should be the poison counters. Six poison counters. But hey, Pit Scorpion only puts one poison counter on, meaning I need four more turns to attack with the Scorpion. I, yeah, I don't see that happen. Then again, we've seen weirder things in magic, of course. Let's see what Ricardo can do. Yeah, pointing out my one pit scorpion, that's scary. Tapping four. Sacking the Lotus. Are we going to see a big brain geyser? Was that in his deck? I'm sure it was. Recall. Okay, this is the card I was worried about. No. Oh, man. He's going to play a huge recall, meaning he can get back the counter magic. He can get back the swords. So three cards are going to go there. Oh, man, this is so good. I would just get back maybe three uh, swords. Okay, the maze makes sense. He does, did he have a land drop yet? I believe he did. Or is this, is this me doing wishful thinking? We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, he's going to get back a maze, a swords, and another swords. That makes sense. Nice question for the people in the, in, in the comment section. I believe all his four swords are in the bin, by the way. Uh, would you have done the same? Would you have taken back the maze and the double swords, or would you have taken back three swords to plowshares? I guess, I guess part of his consideration is also, 
I've played a lot of land removal already, making the maze slightly better. You know, the more land removal I've played, the harder it is for me to get rid of the, of the maze. Attacking him for two here, so another poison counter. He's on seven. But of course, next turn he can start. You know, he can play the maze. He can play the swords. Ah, this is problematic. This, this recall is really problematic. Before the recall, I was confident, but now I'm worried. At least I'm drawing tons of cards to find some more answers. Which is also a problem, because look at my look at my deck. It's really thinning out. I haven't seen a single millstone, by the way, Ricardo. So the funny the funny thing is, and I know I said this a few times already, we don't know each other's decks. So at this point, I'm still thinking, is he on a millstone plan or is there another plan? You know? So he's gaining a zillion life, drawing three cards. He's on seven poison counters. Oh, man. Victory feels very far away right now because I know that he's got the Maze of If and Double Swords in hand. There we see the Maze. He can just wait with the Swords. There's no rush. Going to tap a blue. What are we going to see? A Library of Lang. Wow. Wow. That's even better for Ricardo, meaning he doesn't have to discard anymore. There's no max hand size for him. So Library of Lang, really this old school card that you actually used to see a lot back in the day, uh, but you don't see it that often anymore. There were a lot of control players playing Ivory Tower Library of Lang together with Howling Mine. Actually, exactly what Ricardo is doing. I don't remember Lantex being that popular at first. Uh, that really has gained popularity. And I'm talking about the 90s now, just to clarify. Anyway, there's a crumble. I wonder what I'm going to crumble, though. Crumbling, okay, crumbling the Library of Lang. There is another Gloom. And of course, in response, he's probably going to cast a... Oh, he's going to counter it. Even better. He's going to counter it. Good move by Ricardo. Now I'm going to tap four for a Marsh Viper. The problem, of course, is the swords. Oh, this is so annoying. Do I have like an Ice Storm for the Mace? That would be... Re yeah, I do. So I can take care of the Mace. And I can attack. I can put him on eight counters. Go for it. When I'm looking at this match, by the way, I'm thinking maybe I should try to find out, like, is there a way for me to get Serpent Generator? You know, back in, maybe I should play with the Felden's Cane in the sideboard or something. I don't know. Anyway, passing the turn to Ricardo. But I mean, it's going better than I expected. I'm, I'm, I've been able to add another poison counter. He's got two swords in hand, um, which is going to be tough for him to, to play out in the same turn because of the gloom, because one sword is four mana to cast. And of course, he's on a zillion billion life. But that is irrelevant here. It's all about the poison counters. He's got eight poison counters. Just like it's irrelevant what my life total is because he's only looking at the size of my deck. And I mean, look at that little pile there of yellow sleeves. <laughs> it's really thinning out. What I hope for in this scenario here is, I mean, Ricardo is probably going to play a Swords on the Viper. That's what I'm expecting him to do. And then hopefully I can attack him next turn and put him on 9 Poison and play out another threat, another Poison threat. That would be ideal. There's another Plains. So he doesn't have enough mana to play both of his Swords. He does have enough to keep Counter Magic open. But remember, how many Counter Spells does he still have? I mean, he's used so many. Ooh, what is he going to do, though? Is he going to do something else? There's a moat! Wow! Tapping out for a moat, and the moat, of course, stops everything. But I have, of course, in my sideboard, Tranquilities, and I probably boarded in Tranquilities. So if I have a Tranquility... You know, after seeing all those taxes in game one, I probably boarded in Tranquility, right? If I have it, I can win the game here. 
do I have a tapping three? There's a tranquility. Oh, 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 Nicarda, you're tapped out. Oh, man. And now I can win this. I'm attacking him here, winning, putting him on 11 poison counters because he already was on eight. Wow, but 10 is enough, of course. Wow, 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 wow. What an awesome, awesome match. It was so close. Every time, are you going to stabilize? Are you not stabilizing? There we see a millstone. So it, it was in the hand of Ricardo. And uh, showing what else he had. Wow, so he had enough answers. And uh, I remember talking with him about this match afterwards. He said, you know, I've got the moat play, Matt. I had the moat in hand. It was just too tempting. I wanted to cast the moat. And I didn't think about tranquility. But even if I would have thought about it, I probably would have played the moat because I just want to, you know, show the moat to you. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that, Ricardo. I can I can understand a moat is a, is a beautiful card and a really good card against me. But unfortunately, I did have the tran tranquility. And here we can see my sideboard cards, by the way. I think I boarded in uh there we can see three glooms yeah i've got three glooms in the side boarded in my tsunamis and now uh, one tranquility it seems and an extra crumble so that's that surprises me a little bit because i do play with i believe two tranquilities in the side so i only decided to board in one though now do remember of course i didn't see a moat in game one but you know the play met of ricardo kind of gave it away that i could have expected a moat um, but yeah, wow, what an interesting game. And here we can see the sideboard choices of Ricardo. So he brought in the Jalem Tome, the uh, two Mazes of If, and the Moat. And I actually also took out an Elves of the Deep Shadow. Interesting, yeah, it's hard to make decisions, right, at a certain point. And I took out my, my own card draw. So my, uh, my Sylvan Library... And, uh, and some other ways to draw cards. Why? Because I just expected Ricardo to let me draw cards anyway with his Howling Minds. So I didn't really need to find those cards and use them. Anyway, what an exciting, exciting game. And it was really nice to meet you, Ricardo. Thank you for the match. And like I said, uh, Ricardo is a patron of the show. So if you would like to become a patron as well and... If you support me at a certain tier level, we can also make an episode together, play against each other, all that stuff. If you're interested in that, please take a moment to check out patreon.com slash timmytalks and there you can find out all the ins and outs. I can already tell you that supporting the show starts with just $1 a month and for that support, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you get um, access of, oh, and your name gets mentioned in the end scroll. That is what I'm trying to say. Hey, hey, finally, I got a little bit mixed up there. I'm just a little bit excited still from this match. It's really cool to see Poison working. And actually in this matchup, Poison was perfect because if I would have had like an aggro deck, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, look, the, the life gain plan of Ricardo worked fantastically. Anyway, uh, this was the episode of this week. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share, and comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. All of that is free and really helps the channel move forward. And now we are going to go to the end scroll and have a look at our amazing, wunderbar, fantastic channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.